Hello. Hi, everyone. Here we are preparing for our next journey. We are having an amazing journey and headed towards Australia and New Zealand. Yes. So for folks who follow my channel primarily, this is Dr. Kelly Kirksey, a dear friend of mine, collaborator, as I will write about, and you lied to me about God, my memoir. She is my Tia. She is my chosen family. So this is Dr. Jamie Marich, and she is an amazing, amazing healer, trauma specialist, EMDR. If you look up the word EMDR, you're kind of going to see her picture right in the dictionary because she's really made EMDR accessible for people, training thousands of people, and also in the DID world, really speaking from lived experience and speaking truth to light about dissociative states and how we live in it. How we live in it. And Dr. Kelly was also a contributor for Dissociation Made Simple, speaking very powerfully about how dissociation is a necessity. Yes. A not to be shamed necessity when you lived as a marginal when you live as a marginalized person. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a what I'll call a, a superpower. Yes. It helps us to survive unsurvivable moments in time. So Dr. Kelly's definitely part of the dissociation is not a dirty word movement. <laughs> and one of her quotes in Dissociation Made Simple says, more emphasis on the gifts. Let's take away the disorder part of it. That's right. right. That is right. So uh, if you follow both either of or both of our pages, you know, Dr. Kelly and I have traveled together. Kelly has this great place in my life as being a student, a teacher, and a friend. And all again, chosen together. family, you know, all, all, all rolled together. So a couple of years back, uh, Kelly and I collaborated on a workshop called African-Centered Approaches to Dual Attention or Bilateral Stimulation and Healing. And it was something I really wanted to bring to the EMDR community to wake up our minds and hearts to this idea that EMDR, even though it's been codified as an evidence-based practice, there's nothing new with it, that it is really very indigenous in origin. And that's where I wanted to bring in my dear friend here to um, have a platform to teach us more about African perspectives on drumming and healing. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, what would you say we do in the workshop? Well, really what we do in the workshop is talk about the brain on trauma. Okay, so that's one thing. We talk about the science and the brain on trauma. We talk about the importance of bilateral stimulation as a way to help unwind that and to help people regulate their nervous system. And we also take it back from the colonizers and we give it back to the indigenous people, which in this case, we're talking about African-centered healing practices, how drumming was the medicine, drumming our feet, drumming our hands, drumming the skin of animals, that drumming was the medicine and what we teach in the workshop is how to return to our ancestral roots for healing. The drum was stolen right. from many indigenous cultures and I talk about how it was stolen from the African culture, from my lived experience, and how we get to reclaim it as part of our healing practices. It's a very experiential workshop and we use our bodies for healing. So. And this is a workshop, whether you identify as black, as white, as part of any other ethnic group, like Dr. Kelly and I are even talking today about dislike of the term BIPOC, right? Because it's very <sighs> lumping. Oh, yeah. So if you use the term BIPOC, stop it. Just stop it right now, because that's just like saying colored. Mm-hmm. And we know that the term color was a derogatory term. And for me, BIPOC takes away the many textures of who we are mm -hmm. as a culture. Mm -hmm. And it lumps us together. It takes away our identity as people of African descent, people of uh, Latina descent, people of... It takes away who we are and just says, oh, you have some melanin. You're all in the same box. So yeah. if you're using BIPOC, stop it and look at the person that you're talking about and talking with 
and use that identity. So I don't say, I love Jamie. She's a white woman. She's Croatian. Okay. She's Croatian. So I honor that identity, yeah. not the crayon color. So that to say, however you identify, this is a workshop we believe you can benefit from. And it's the reason that Kelly and I have decided since the beginning of this to show up as a black person, as a white person, because a message that I will have to white folks in the workshop is how we can honor traditional roots. We'll discuss how to bring them into our healing respectfully. And, but also part of that inspiration is for me, you know, you, like you said, as a Croatian person, I've had to do digging to Croatian indigenous That's right. healing practices, That's which have right. been, and so wherever you're at, we're hoping the workshop inspires. Now, the reason we're talking about this workshop so much, we <laughs> have done it online. There's a home study version of it. We're going to get to teach it in Australia. In at, Australia. At the invitation of some beautiful friends of ours in, in the Hunter Valley. And we are excited making this trip to Australia because we want to learn just as much as we want to teach. Exactly. And... The one thing I'll say about anyone that's interested in cultural competence or cultural humility, it starts with ourselves. It starts with looking at our own cultural background, looking at our own ancestry, because what are those healing traditions in your ancestry that kept your ancestors going? that kept them alive? What were the teas they used? What were mm -hmm. the, the songs that they sang? What were the dances that they did? How did they live? What did your ancestors pass down to you? So I talk about African Center Healing because that's my frame of reference. Mm -hmm. That's my frame of reference. But where are you from? Yeah. Start there. And connect to those roots. Mm -hmm. They run deep. So we'll... Uh be posting some content from Australia and and New Zealand uh, and New Zealand we're going to uh, take a, a learning week in New Zealand after we we teach in Australia and we know it's going to bring up a lot about a lot of things mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that as we decide to share content you can benefit in some way or just just take it in and in a way that might bring up some questions and discussion points for you because that's something that I think has defined our friendship that whatever yes. an experience is bringing up we want to sit with the experience the discomfort and that to me is a it's Camino a right that is the Camino <laughs> that is the gift of pilgrimage yeah so I mean back in what, 2022 mm -hmm. we we went on that long journey from Saria to Santiago we literally were in three different countries in one day, mm -hmm. in Andorra, in France, and in Spain. That was the pre-Camino. That was the pre-Camino, sure, yeah. pre even before we <laughs> laced up our hiking shoes. But it's saying yes to the journey and everything that is involved in the journey. All of the emotions, all of the physical pain, all of the emotional upheavals, all the beauty and the joy. So we say yes to sitting with all of it. And stay tuned. That is the work of pilgrimage. That's the work of pilgrimage.